Hi, we're here at the 2008 Los Angeles Auto Show, and we're uh, right here next to the one of the four GM Volts. My name's Britta Gross, B-R-I-T-T-A, Gross, G-R-O-S-S. I'm a manager of electrical infrastructure and hydrogen infrastructure at General Motors. And uh, what's, where are you coming from to get into this position? Uh, I'm a double E major. I started out at uh, Hughes Aircraft here in Los Angeles uh, doing satellite communications, uh, communication satellite um, system engineering, and then moved through the GM family to Opel in Germany, and then I ended up at, uh, at GM in uh, Warren, Michigan doing the advanced uh, technology vehicles. Let me tell you the history of how we got started. We, about a year ago when we really started uh, um, getting this thing ready for production and, and, and doing the, all the OKs, that this, we got this vehicle right, we got to now worry about everything else around the vehicle. Uh, we started talking to utilities, trying to understand, you know, hey, what do we need to know about plug-in in vehicles? What do you, what, what's, where do you stand on energy issues and the sustainability and, and the reliability of the grid and so on? How do you answer these questions? Do we have, we, have we thought this through carefully and end? As we talked to more and more utilities, it was clear they are very, very different from one another. There are 3,000 utilities in the country. Uh, they're regulated differently. They have different base load uh, generating uh, plants in their fuel mix. Um, they have different rate option plans for, for consumers. It's an incredibly complex field. So we put together a collaborative effort through EPRI, the Electric Power Research Institute. We started with 30 utilities, now we've got 40. We're growing uh, all the time. And 40 utilities, fantastic, progressive utilities from all over North America. Duke Energy is a good example in the Carolinas. Uh, Progress Energy in the Carolinas in Florida, in California, Southern California, Edison, PG&E, and uh, San Diego Gas and Electric. We've got you know some of the Northwest utilities in Seattle and Portland. Uh, DTE, of course, Detroit is, is on board. Austin Energy, First Energy, Center Point Energy. Again, a big amalgam. In Canada, I, I should mention BC Hydro and also Hydro Quebec. So, I mean, a lot of utilities. I wish I could sit here and name them all because they're fabulous partners. They're excited about plug-in vehicles. Uh, Non-issue getting these vehicles into uh, onto the grid, a, an absolute non-issue. We just got to do it right and plan for the future. Exactly. So one of the one of the key things was getting the plugging right and making sure that we've anticipated correctly the future of some utilities going to smart metering, some will not have smart metering for a while, which is an appliance that goes in the home that makes uh, consumers much smarter about the energy usage and time of day use of appliances in their home. So they can really go for the lowest cost solutions and are encouraged to charge things and use appliances, for example, after 7 p.m. at night or after 10 p.m. at night. So um, in talking to utilities, we took full advantage of what they knew in developing even the standards for plugging in these vehicles. There were not common standards amongst the automakers. So we took and, and, and would propose anything we do relative to the hardware of connecting the vehicles, the plug itself, and also the communications protocol, how you communicate from the utility into someday the vehicle in a way that helps the utility with the consent of the consumer because they're going to get the benefit of low-cost electricity, the ability to communicate with the vehicle and maybe delay charging, for example, till after 10 p.m. at night. Um, so um, we've developed standards, uh, the J1772, these are SAE standards, Society of Automotive Engineer, uh, Engineering is where the standards are written for automakers. And we, in the, in the process of developing the standard, writing it down, setting forth a proposal that would be um, acceptable and in fact has thought through a lot of the issues, we have gotten the buy-in of all the utilities in our collaborative effort and the utilities beyond. So this is another way of taking, uh, taking advantage of this collaboration we've set up to get their input and making sure we're going to SAE with a very solid proposal for the hardware. There's another standard, this communication one I mentioned, that one's in writing right now and that's the J2836. So that one's being written as we speak. We've got a lot of consensus already built around what the communication protocol should look like. Um, and so that just now needs to be written down and then get the consent of all the other automakers so that we're all on board. We're looking again for common um, solutions for the technical interface on charging vehicles and communicating between utilities and vehicles. This is a large volume production vehicle. We want this to sell in very large volume, which means you want to make it appealing to broader and broader um, 
uh, uh, groups of consumers, which means it can't be that expensive. So one of the important things to getting costs out of this vehicle is going to be the help of government. I mean, there's a lot of society wins in doing this vehicle. Every you know, for every 40 miles that you're you know electrified and driving on the battery is just 40 miles you're not driving on gas. And so these wins for society are important things for the government to understand. The cost is going to be expensive. It is for any new technology that you deploy. So being able to bring down that cost with incentives, for example, like the federal tax credit that was just um, um, authorized and awarded, $7,500 tax credit for a Volt-like vehicle that gets 40 miles range. Important starting point, a fabulous starting point for us. Now we need to look for other incentives that we can find. Another big one is going to be a battery warranty. A lot of consumers just want that confidence that the battery is not going to um, is going to have that full life durability, and that's one of the big unknowns. Is you can accelerate a lot of testing, but not all of it. So a battery warranty would be the next big ask we're going to go to the federal government for. Again, there ought to be ways to help contribute to the success of, of programs that are doing the right thing to get us off petroleum and improve the, the quality of the air and reduce the CO2 emissions from vehicles. D It's my pleasure. Uh, very excited about the program. These are tough times for automakers, but a very exciting time. Thank you very much. You're welcome.